On Sunday, February 26, 2023, I presented for my fifth year at the Toronto Outdoor Adventure Show. Here is my presentation for that day. I hope you enjoy it. Yes? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys sleeping? I just gave you all sugar. Come on. Yeah. Welcome to the Outdoor Adventure Show and my presentation on how to keep things from going wrong, tips and tricks. Yesterday I did a presentation on how to keep things from going wrong, planning and preparation. If you missed it, it's going to be on my YouTube channel as well as this presentation a little bit later. I also have some great prizes to give away today. Not my Nalgene, sorry. Got a Sven saw, some Mochiji meals, and some maps from Lat Long. So if you pay attention, you can answer a skill testing question. You might walk away with some free sway. All right, let's get started. One of the most important skills that you will ever need when you're backcountry camping is how to keep things from going wrong. Obstacles can pop up at any time before, after, and during your trip. However, if you plan accordingly and you prepare, you can make your trip much more successful and far more enjoyable. Right? Now how do you do that? Well, that's what I want to talk about today. Who am I? My name is Christina. I'm also known as Camper Christina. And I went on my very first backcountry trip in Algonquin Park in 2002. I fell in love and I've been backcountry camping ever since. And I have been using this backpack since 2002. I got it for $20 and I absolutely love it. And I'm still using it today. Since 2015, most of the trips that I've been on have been solo trips. I like to go on trips in remote areas, and I do camp year-round. In order to do that, however, I have to over-prepare and anticipate for every single problem that can arise to keep things from going wrong. There are so many things that can happen when you're out on an adventure, and I made a short video about some of them. Fingers crossed it works today. Sometimes when you're out on a trip, stuff goes wrong. And I'm gonna show you some clips of things that have gone wrong in my trips over the past few years and how I made them right and what I did to resolve them. So all kinds of tips and tricks that you should know when you're going out in the backcountry. And I'm gonna share some of mine with you in hopes that they might help you be more prepared when you're out on an adventure. Shoe bear, go away. Oh yeah, look at the size of that, and it's moving. Oh. Oh, I just don't wanna, I just wanna stand here and not go anymore. Um, oh, yes, I'm very, very cold now. So I'm gonna sit out here, change all my clothes, put all my dry clothes on, get all my sleeping clothes on, and then by the time that's all ready, um, I should be done. And then I'm probably gonna eat this in my sleeping bag. Judging by my pants being soaking wet, I'm sure I have avoided quite a few scratches on my legs already this morning. I got my man gear on. <laughs> when you're on a campsite, that's your campsite. Like people respect that and you stay away. Um, fire's going nicely with the little uh, foil grill over top. I've got uh, a couple pieces of wood drying out there. When I can't find the trail, I use the axe blazes on the trees. But because of the fire, a lot of the bark has been burnt off and I don't see any axe blazes either. Ooh, there's a creek here too. Now I know I'm on the right path for sure. My knee just met this lovely sharp stick sticking out of the ground. I don't think I broke the skin. Something funny on my foot. Uh, there's like a giant blood sucker. One wrong step can really mess you up, eh? Thankfully I'm a graceful faller. If you're in places like I just was, where you're going through rock, you're looking for three rocks piled on top of each other. I thank Mr. Moose or Mrs. Moose for helping me because uh, that's the trail I followed that took me to the portage. Uh, I can see the opening there to the water, so I'm not far. I think I'm maybe about two thirds of the way through. Hopefully it's quiet at night, I guess. Um, but I pulled these out just in case. <laughs> and this is why it's not a good idea to take the canoe first. You can see up here, I've bent 
the ferns. They're the easiest ones to do. The wrong step and down you go, eh? You never know, right? And it's always better to be safe than sorry. That is the first time in, I don't know how many years of tripping, 20, that I've ever blown my whistle. You have to use your best judgment when you're doing stuff like this, and that's what backcountry camping is all about. And that's exactly what backcountry camping is all about, right? You've got to plan, you've got to prepare, you've got to think about things that might happen when you're out there so that if they do happen, you're ready for them. Foil. Foil can be priceless when you're out on a trip. I know it's not that great for the environment. Uh, in this particular instance, I was out on a trip in Algonquin. I was out on a five-day trip, my, one of my first big solos. And uh, I had been out in the pouring rain tripping all day. This was actually the weekend that I found out my rain jacket wasn't waterproof anymore. And I was soaked right through. My shirts were soaked. I was soaked right through the skin. I was starting to get cold. When I got to camp, it was still raining. Everything was soaking wet. So I had a piece of foil. I always bring a grill with me. In Algonquin Park, obviously you can find like 17 of them beside the fire pit. So put it over top. I got some really wet pieces of wood and I made a, like a rack. Put some pieces of wood on top of that so they could dry out. Got the fire going and it helped it from like the rain dousing it out. I did bring a tarp on the trip, but I didn't bring my big 10 by 13 because I was trying to save on weight. I had a ton of portages to do but I did stick my little footprint for my tent in there. So it was big enough to cover me, but not the fire. So the foil helped to cover the fire, kept the rain from putting it out. And I was able to sit there, dry all my clothes, dry my shoes, get myself warm, and avoid hypothermia. Tarps are also good for windbreakers. Um, I've used a lot of them recently. In the last couple of years, I've had a lot of issues with winds, so tarps are great to use as a windbreak as well. Take your time when you're out on a trip. Uh, a lot of these places that I go to, they're very rugged and rough. Um, so I have to walk very slowly. And uh, I had a little bit of a spill last year on one of my trips. But because I keep my hands free when I'm walking, I'm able to put them out and break my fall. You always see people on portage, especially new people. They've got their hands full. They're carrying 10 different things. Try to keep your hands free. Clip your stuff to your pack so that if you do wipe out, you can kind of break your fall a little bit. Bring an extra paddle. Some of you might not know this. I don't talk about it much in my videos, but if you see here under the seat, this little yellow handle is actually the handle of a telescopic paddle. I've been carrying it for a couple of years now. I got it at Canadian Tire for like 20 bucks. It's probably about 40 now with COVID, but um, it's great. It's always there in case I need it. I carry it on every portage and every trip with me. It just stays tied under the seat. I was out in uh, a trip, doing a trip late fall one year, and I had to break the ice with my double blade, so I was really happy to have that extra paddle just in case something happened to it. Be aware of others. Uh, I was out on Tim Lake. Uh, I like Tim Lake. I do the, some relaxing trips there. It's an access lake in Algonquin. And um, I've camped on the exact same campsites two years in a row now. It's right by the river, so I like it because I can get up early in the morning, go check for moose. Uh, last year I saw some snorting otters there, so it's really cool. And um, two times now, both years, I've come across people paddling around in the dark looking for campsites. So this particular instance, I was on Tim Lake. It was last year, and beautiful full moon, as you can see. Uh, it was about 10.30 at night. I was just getting ready to go to my tent, take a couple last minute pictures and videos when I heard voices coming up the river. Um, so I waited, I flashed my very bright Army Tech headlamp, uh, talked to them, asked them if they were okay. They were on their way to Roseberry. They didn't realize how many beaver dams, they didn't plan accordingly, they didn't plan properly, and they didn't know how long it was gonna take them. So they decided to go back to the access. They were gonna get in their car drive down the logging road which is pretty dangerous at night in Algonquin you can run into a moose pretty easily um, I had scouted the camp like the, the lake earlier I knew that there was a bunch of campsites open so I directed them with my flashlight to one I did offer for them to stay with me um, and they made it to the campsite safely so always be aware and cognizant of other people you know I asked if there were any new people here so some of you are pretty experienced help out those other people if you can if they need help don't be vulnerable. Now, this is a bit of a story, but it's one that I wanted to share for a long time. And uh, 
I was out on a trip. Uh, I do a lot of trips in remote areas, as you guys know, and people always ask me, are you afraid of bears? Are you afraid of animals? And I say, you know what I'm afraid of? You guys know, right? Surely? People, right? So I'm, I'm really scared of people because I'm out by myself. I'm a single woman. And uh, three times now in Tomogamy, I've been encroached on my campsite by other people. Guys dropped off their dogs on my campsite, some other things. But uh, this story I'm going to tell is not my own because uh, I really think it's important to share it. I had a woman following me. Um, she wanted to go out on a solo trip and uh, she was inspired by me to go out on a solo trip. So she decided to go to Kiosk Lake, Kiosh Kokli in Algonquin. And um, she planned the trip. She went out to Access Lake, paddled out to the lake, and paddled to the campsite. She was staying there two or three days, starting to build her confidence up, feeling really good. And she was sitting in her tent and all of a sudden, Someone unzipped her tent. It was a man. He asked her to see her permit. Where is your permit? She said, well, my permit's right here, but who are you? And he said, well, you're on my campsite. I want to camp here tonight, and you're going to have to go. You can stay, you can go, but I'm going to set up my tent, drinking a can of beer. He was with a woman and a dog. And the dog started snarling at her, barking at her. She was terrified. So she packed up her tent. She went to the office. She talked to Carmen. Carmen's amazing. Uh, she's been there forever. And uh, she said, well, I can't do anything right now. The warden's not here, but here's a campsite. Stay for the night. And then she got up the next day and left. I got home from a seven-day trip in Tomogamy. This had happened about five or six days beforehand. And I had had someone drop off two dogs on my campsite while I was there, pooped behind my tent, a couple of things. It wasn't good. So I was really worried. And I, I, I felt bad. I felt responsible because I told this woman to do this, right? Like, go out by yourself. You'll be OK. So I contacted the park warden. Uh, they ended up going to the campsite the next morning. They gave the guys a fine. They evicted them from the campground and they gave them a fine. And what happens when you get a fine in Ontario Parks, which I didn't know, is they attach it, they put a note on your driver's license. So if somebody it doesn't do anything, you don't lose points, but if you get pulled over or anybody pulls up your driver's license for any reason, that note is attached. So I thought that was really good and she was happy. She told me she was going to keep going out. It wasn't going to deter her, but you know, always be aware because 99% of canoe trippers are amazing. But there's always one of those two people out there that's just kind of like not really sure. So be aware. Hypothermia is something that can happen on a trip quite easily. I've listed the signs of hypothermia here, shivering, numbness, lack of coordination, lack of speech, confusion, impaired judgment. Um, be aware of these things. I was out on a trip in Tomogamy. I know you guys are surprised. I don't go there very often. Um, and I was doing a big loop. I had been out tripping all day. I got lost in five different ways. Lots of portages, lots of hard. I was sweating. And when I went to the campsite that I was going to stay on, it was on the map, but it didn't exist in real life. So I had to keep paddling, and by the time I got to the campsite that was there, <coughs> excuse me, um, by the time I got to the campsite that was there, it was starting to get dark. So I pulled up my canoe, I unpacked my stuff, as soon as it started getting dark, the temperature started going down, I'm sitting there freezing, I'm starting to shiver. You saw in the video clip, the sound was a little low, sorry, but I was talking and I was like, I'm making my dinner. And I was shaking, I was shivering, and I knew that I was starting to experience signs of hypothermia. So what I did was I got out my dry clothes, I got out my OTG freeze-dried meal, boiled some water. While the water was boiling, I put my dry clothes on, and I did something that I don't recommend you guys do unless you're in this situation. And this is where it comes into play. When you're backcountry camping, you're going to have situations where you're going to have to break the rules. Never eat your food in your tent, right? You guys know that. Bears will come. It's not good. But in this particular situation, I needed to get warm as soon as possible. So I put on my dry clothes. I got in my sleeping bag. I ate my warm, comfy, cozy meal in my tent. And thankfully, no bears came. I didn't have any problems. But sometimes you got to break the rules to do what's best for you. I, ha I got warm very quickly. I had a great night. And I continued on with the trip. And I didn't have any problems. Preventing injuries on a trip is something that I have been very cognizant of the last few years. I'm getting up in age here and uh, had a lot of things going wrong, hip problems, lower back problems, piriformis, all kinds of stuff. So I've got to be cognizant of that and I have to think ahead. 
don't want to do things that are going to hurt yourself. If you pull your back when you're out on a trip in the middle of nowhere, how are you going to get out? So I started, uh, my chiropractor recommended having a back rest. Um, so I got this canoe seat. It weighs three and a half pounds. I carry it on all my trips. I carry it on all the portages, but I don't have any hip or problems, issues with my lower back or anything when I'm out on a trip. And that's the most important thing. Um, some of you probably have also seen the way that I pick up a canoe. Can I have the canoe over? Well, it's 30 pounds. Of course I can pick it up and flip it over my head like all you see all these people do on YouTube. I can do that. Do I do that? I don't. The reason is because I want to save my body. I don't want to do anything jarring or pull anything. So I pick it up slowly, I put the nose down, and then I pull it up gently. That keeps me from having injuries. And if you have an injury, you get in trouble. So. This is uh, for some of you winter campers out there. Some of you people that were at Mew Lake last weekend might have experienced some melt in your tent. Uh, always shovel and insulate under your wood stove or hot tent in the winter. Melt is a huge thing and uh, you're putting a very hot stove on top of snow or ice. It's going to melt and you're going to end up having a lake in your tent. So be cognizant of it. Insulate under your tent. You want to put some foam pads, some puzzle pieces, some yoga mats, insulate underneath there so that that heat doesn't get down to the ground and end up, you know, having you on a water bed, right? Water beds are no longer in fashion, so you don't want to sleep on that. I've woken up to this. This is actually from my teepee. They're one of the very first times I camped with the wood stove in my tent, and uh, I woke up to that water on my cheek. Know several forms of navigation so you don't get lost. Educate yourselves. Frontenac Park, uh, they have some great courses there. I believe they're still online. $25 a day for Map and Compass, right? Go there, camp for the weekend, make a day of it, make a weekend of it. Learn your skills, know how to navigate. I navigate by several forms. I use hand railing, I use GPS, I use several different types of maps. Uh, I have maps on my phone. The more things that you have to help you get out of bad situations, the better, right? Kevin Callen, he was here yesterday, the happy camper. He's got a great map and compass video right on his YouTube channel. It's free. Just go look it up and, and watch it. That way you know things and the more you know, the better equipped you are to handle problems when you're out in the backcountry. Tips for finding lost trails. Now, some of you know that I go into some pretty crazy areas. Tomogamy again, I know, you're not surprised. But uh, there are a lot of times where I go out. Tomogamy is known as a remote wilderness park. So a lot of times the trails aren't marked. There are bright yellow portage signs or trail tape everywhere. That's how they want it. They want to keep it that way. But there have been days where I spent an hour looking for a portage and I can't find it. So I made a couple slides to help you guys when you're out and about to just help you find some trails if you're in one of these areas. Um, so in the video, I don't know if you saw, Mr. Moose and Mrs. Moose helped me very much. I was looking for this trail for over an hour. I could not find it to save my life. And uh, I looked down and all of a sudden I saw a big pile of moose poop. Every time I rehearse this I say mouse poop, so moose poop, a mouse poop, and matted down grass. Moose are huge. Anybody seen a moose? You guys know they're massive, right? The size of a big van. So if I was a moose, I'd want to walk in a nice big open area. I wouldn't want to walk where there's like forests and stuff. So I followed the matted down grasses. Ta-da! I found the portage. Look for openings in the trees. If you get lost in the forest, you lose the trail, always look up. A lot of times you can see where the forest will open up and where the water might be. Try to head in that direction. Most of the time you will find the trail. Here's some, just some markers for portages. Obviously, uh, you know, you got trail tape or portage signs, things like that. Um, there's also some other ones that you can look for if you're in some remote areas. Uh, axe blazes, if you're going on to Stoggin and Tomogamy and places like that, they, they mark the trails with axe blazes. And a lot of times those axe blazes have been there for a very, very long time. So they will look something like this right here. It's almost like it's part of the tree at this point. But that's what an old axe blaze looked like. I have a new axe blaze there. Um, if you're in an area where there's no trees, you're going to be looking for rock cairns. Usually they stack three on top of each other. Please don't make a nook when you're out. It's really bad, it's not a navigation tool, and it can confuse people. So these rock cairns are there for a reason. A lot of places along the Lady Evelyn River in Chamogamy, you will see these, and they will help guide you because there's no trees. 
Look for other landmarks on the map, creeks, elevation, inlets, and points. Um, again, I was in Tumagi uh, doing a trip there, and there had been a forest fire a couple of years before. So all of the trees were burnt. There was no bark on them. You couldn't see any axe blazes. There was nothing. So I couldn't find the trail. It was overgrown. Nobody goes there. It was super remote. This is actually the trip where I saw the lynx, so it's good I got through there. Um, but I noticed on the map there was a little tiny creek running alongside the portage. I found the creek, walked along it, made it to the other side. I unfortunately am a double carrier. I'm sure some of some of you other people are double carry, uh, which means that not only do I have to make it through the trail once, but I have to find my way back to find my bag or my canoe, and then I have to go back again. So if I'm in these overgrown areas, what I'll do is I'll bend branches. I find that ferns are the best. You see me now? I find that ferns are the best because you can snap them really easily. They have a lot of foliage on them, and as soon as you start snapping the ferns, it opens up a path and you can see more clearly of how to get through. Be bear aware, it's a no-brainer, right? Always be cognizant of the bears. You are in their territory. Um, many of you who watch my videos, I'm sure you hear me say, Shoo bear, go away, go away bear, I'll smack the canoe. I do this on a regular basis, I'm by myself, I'm not making a lot of noise, I'm not talking to people, so I need those bears to know that I'm here, and most of the time they'll run away. In 20 years, over 20 years of backcountry camping, I have never seen a bear in the backcountry. So I must be doing something right. Now right along those same lines, Bears are attracted to scented items, even citronella candles. I was car camping with two girlfriends uh, from Niagara at New Lake one year. Assured them we would never see a bear. I never see them. And a bear came to the campsite. I didn't put the citronella candles away. It's not food, but it smells. And that poor little bear ate the whole citronella candle. I felt horrible. I'm sure the bear didn't feel very good. And it was a very important lesson learned. Anything scented, always make sure you put it away. You don't want to attract animals to your campsite. It doesn't only endanger you, but it endangers everybody who's going to camp at that site after you. And it also endangers the bear. Protect your feet. Many of you who watch my videos have seen this lovely picture here. I've gotten lots of bones from people. And, oh, oh. Giant leech, last, last day, 20 minutes left of my five day solo. My big solo, it's my first time I've done a five-day solo, and I'm paddling through the lake, and I look down at my foot, and there's a giant leech on my foot. So I take off my sandal, and five and six of its babies are on the toes, and my foot bled for two hours. You will never see me doing a challenging trip for Taj's without wearing water socks on my feet. This is why I wear them. They also protect your feet from scratches, cuts, sucky muck feet, blood suckers, leeches, and blisters. When dealing with sucky muck, tighten your shoes and pull out slowly. I've never met quicksand before, but I hear sucky muck and quicksand are quite similar. And uh, the, the key to getting out of quicksand is to pull out slowly. So if you know you're in an area or you're at the time of year, spring or fall, when it's really wet out, make sure you tighten your shoes. Pull your leg out very slowly and make sure that you do that. Hopefully your shoe will be attached and you won't have to go digging for it like I did on this trip in Algonquin where I almost <laughs> didn't get my shoe back. <laughs> Earplugs can be a game changer. Even when you're out on a remote backcountry trip, there are things that can affect you when you're trying to sleep. It's important to get a good night's rest when you're out there, if you're tripping a lot. Um, you know, you've got spring peepers, waterfalls. I have issues with hearing, I hear voices in them. So I always carry a pair of earplugs with me. They don't take up any room, they're super light, but when you need them, it's great to have them. Take your time and use assistance when available. I have no shame at all when I'm on a trip. If I'm on a portage or I'm in the Lady Evelyn River, I'm going through some rocky areas. This is actually a, a hike I did on the crack in Killarney and uh, I'm sliding down on my bum. I have been known to crawl on my hands and knees I don't have any shin. This is actually a picture of my friend Ashley because it's really hard to film yourself while you're crawling on your hands and knees. Um, but I do do it. 
I reach out and use the rocks, whatever I can, because you don't want to hurt yourself when you're out on a trip. Key, key thing is to always avo avoid an injury, right? Wear pants when tripping in remote areas. Uh, my friend Sean Rowley at Paddling Ventures Radio always talks about wearing pants. He doesn't like to wear them. I always wear pants when I'm tripping. Uh, you can see here there's a picture. So it didn't come out that clear, but it looked a lot worse in person. This is after one of my tough five-day solos. Legs covered in bruises. What you don't see is scratches and cuts and open wounds. They can get infected. Always wear pants, you know, I know it's hot out. I bring shorts, I wear those for when I'm at camp, for when I'm tripping through, protect your legs. Um, also helps to avoid scratches, cuts, sucky muck legs, itchy skin for poisonous plants, more bug bites, and blood suckers and leeches, again, sorry. <laughs> Always check your food to ensure it's not spoiled. Uh, if you watch my videos, I was making a bunch of Camper Christina Cooks videos a little while ago. And I notice that I often take my food and sniff it before I eat it. I didn't actually realize I was doing it. I wasn't very aware of it. But um, always bring a couple extra freeze-dried meals to have with you. If you ever have any inclination that your food is spoiled in any way, don't eat it. I have thrown up in one of these more than, more than a few times. I don't recommend it. It's not pleasant. So always watch what you eat. If your food feels slimy or it doesn't smell right, just pass on it. You'll be okay. You're not going to die if you miss a lunch or a dinner. Bring a good first aid kit and know how to use it. Uh, this uh, actually looks like I rolled my ankle, but I didn't. I was on a trip in the Massasauga, and I got a couple of bug bites. I don't know what they were, but uh, I noticed that I had some bites on my leg. My, my ankle swelled right up. I always carry a first aid kit, I've trained in first aid, took some allergy pills, drank a bunch of water, a couple hours later, swelling was gone. Hot rocks will burn a hole in your tent. Self-explanatory. Always tell someone where you're going and when you'll be back. Uh, I, I really like this picture. I was out, again, I know, on a trip into Mogami, and uh, I was at the Twinkle Lake Access, and I came out of my trip to find this note on a tree. The funny thing for me was that I know the person who wrote the note, and I know who the person the note was for. So I thought it would be a great picture, um, because there's no Wi-Fi, there's no signal out there in Tomogamy, right, in these places. So I left a note on a tree with some flagging tape if anybody was looking for him, so they, they knew how to find him. But carry emergency signaling devices, right? You never know if your cell phone's gonna work, it's not gonna work, the battery's gonna die, if you have a signal or not. So always carry a signaling device if you're going out into areas uh, that are too populated. Always have a backup plan when you go out on a trip, bring extra maps, bring all the things, have a backup plan just in case something goes wrong. Always, always, always wear your PFD, helps to avoid death. Just recently received an award from the Canadian Safe Boating Council for promoting safety on the water. I always wear my PFD. Uh, there's a lot of drownings that happen out there. You don't want to be that person, so make sure you get home, wear your PFD. I believe that the key ingredient to not having things go wrong when you're out on a trip is to prepare properly for any and every situation. And if you do that, you have a pretty good percentage of heading out and not having anything go wrong on your trip. I'd like to thank you all for coming to my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for all the comments and likes. I appreciate it. Don't head out. I've got some prizes to give away. My friend Denny here is going to come. Just want to take a moment to thank H2O Canoe Company. I am sponsored by them. They've got a beautiful canoe for me to paddle this year. If you haven't seen it, it's gorgeous. It's over by the booth there. Uh, go, see, go see Jeff. Say hello. Keen Footwear, they've been providing me footwear for the last eight years. Love them. And uh, I have some great prizes today. I have a Sven saw sent to me from the USA, from Sven. Um, I also have uh, some maps from Lat Long. Their new map company, Arnaud, is here. He's actually got a, a little bit of a, a contest going on there. So if you go see him, he's got a raffle free for you guys. If you want to win some maps. And I've got two of them to give away today, so you can check them out. And I've got six meals from OTG. So what we're going to do is Denny's going to come up here. Um, I don't like to do this because I know a lot of you people, right? I don't want to seem biased. 
So Jenny doesn't know anybody. Jenny's with Kid Products. He is the D in Kid. If you haven't seen them, I have some uh, great products from them. The titanium pot I use is from them, and it's fantastic. Fire bellows, stick soap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some questions, and uh, first person to answer, raise your hand. Denny will call you out. Make sure that you talk very loudly. Yell if you have to. It's very hard for me to hear up here. Let me know the answer. If you get it right, come on up and get a prize. It's like backcountry should be. First come, first serve. So come on up. Okay, you ready, Denny? Absolutely. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I got free stuff here. Come on. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't have my glasses on, so hopefully I remember this. Okay, I, the first couple of questions are a little hard because there's some good stuff up here. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, name two tips I provided for finding lost trails. The lady in brown with the headphones on. Stand up. Bending the ferns. Bending the ferns to find a lost trail. Look up to the sky for an open area. Come on, there's a stencil. Moose. Moose. Moose dump. This is great. Yeah, come on up. I've made you work hard enough. Okay. Name two signs of hypothermia. A young lady on the ground. Yep. Emily? Yep. Shivering? Name two signs of hypothermia. Don't ask your mom. Shivering and like numbness. Shivering and numbness. Come on up. This lip gloss is really sticky on my Okay. Uh, all right. This might be an easy one. Name. No, that's not it. I keep this extra item under my canoe seat. The man with the glass, I can roll you right there. Yeah, you still got your hand up. Here. Christian, right? Paddle, spare paddle. Come on up. What did the bear eat at my campsite on Mule Lake? The lady with the gray toque and the red sweater. The lady with the gray toque and the red sweater standing up. Citronella candle, come on up. Hey, I know you. Uh, what is the best way to get out of sucking muck? Camouflage? <laughs> Lift your foot up slowly. You want to say the other one too, just for the, just for everybody in the audience? <laughs> it's okay, I only asked for one. Come on up. Tighten your shoes. How many do we have left? A couple still. What do I suggest wearing to protect your legs on remote trips? You and the gray. Come on up, Miss. What's the answer? What do I suggest wearing to protect your legs on remote trips? Long pants. Grab yourself a meal. There's different kinds, so just read the labels. Two left. All right. What life-saving item do I wear whenever I'm on the water? Lady in the front. PFD. PFD. Always wear your PFD. It's not a law, but it could save your life. It's not going to save your life if you're not wearing it. Okay. We got one left. Let's make it really, really hard. What is my favorite brand of freeze-dried meal? Yes. Yep. OTG. OTG. That's right. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you on YouTube. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. Also click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to get more information on the stuff I use on my trips, please check out my website at camperchristina.com. Thanks. Bye.